Hi, scholars. I hope that you're excited to keep learning about Frida today. You know that she is my favorite artist, so I am super excited to show you her artwork. Um, if you did not watch our Monday video, you have to go back and watch the Monday video first, okay? If you don't watch the Monday video, you're gonna be a little bit confused. So if you already watched the Monday video, then I want you to remember two things. The first thing is that you can pause and you can rewind whenever you need to, okay? So if you need to hit that pause button because you wanna look at something, or if you need to hit rewind to make sure you hear something right, then I want you to do that, okay? Now, the second thing is we need to do a recap of Frida's life. So the first thing we need to remember is that Frida was born a really long time ago. She was born in 1907. The other thing we need to remember is that she uh, was in a bus accident when she was 18. And this had a really, really big impact on her life. So when she was in the bus accident, remember she couldn't walk, she couldn't go anywhere, she had to stay in bed because her back and her insides were really messed up. Um, after that, she became famous, a really famous painter. She got married to her husband, Diego Rivera, and then she ended up passing away because she was in and out of the hospital all the time. Okay, scholars? So now we're gonna get started learning about all her artworks and what makes them so special. So Frida was very, very famous for something called a self-portrait. That's these words right up here. Can we say the word self portrait ready one two three self portrait good job scholars so a self portrait is a portrait of you it's not a picture of anybody else it means that you painted or you drew something and it's just you in the picture okay so if miss quinones paints a picture and it's of uh, my mom that's not a self portrait because it's not me okay so Frida was very, very famous for self-portraits because when she was um, laying in bed, when she was uh, trying to get healthy after her accident, she actually had a mirror right on top of her head. So every day she was able to look at herself and she studied her face. And then when she would paint, she was uh, so used to seeing her face, she would just paint herself and she got super famous because her self-portraits were so amazing. So let's take a look at this self-portrait. This one is called The Frame. And you can tell that she's kind of sitting in a frame. If you have a picture frame in your house and it has your family, imagine this like a picture frame. So you can see the frame is all around her. It's very colorful. You see it's got these um, flowers. You can see it's got some birds on this side. And then Frida, of course, is in the middle. Now I want us to take a look at a real picture of Frida. And I want us to compare it to this. Okay, so in this real picture of Frida, we can see that she really does have her flower crown. She really does have her unibrow. She has her traditional Mexican clothes. And then in her self-portrait, she does all the same things. So she gave herself her unibrow. She gave herself her flower crown and had her braids. And then you can see the top of her traditional clothes. So Frida was very, very good at drawing herself or painting herself, I should say. And she was so, so precise on getting her style just right. So this next um, self-portrait of Frida, we actually see two people, but it's just Frida two times. So if it's Frida two times, it still counts. It's still a self-portrait. So a lot of her self-portraits, they have names in Spanish. So this Spanish name for this one is Árbol de la Esperanza Mantente Firme. I'm gonna say that one more time, ready? Árbol de la Esperanza Mantente Firme. And this means tree of hope, remain strong. So let's, let's think about this title a little bit. You can see that she wrote the title on this flag here. But when we look at these two Fridas, they look very, very different from one another. This first Frida, looks pretty happy. She looks pretty healthy. And you can also see that she's holding the cast from when she was sick. So all of this would have been around her body while she was getting healthy. So we can see a happy and healthy and a grown up Frida 
here. But we also see a Frida that's not happy. She's not healthy. She's very hurt. So this Frida is like the Frida who was just in the accident. And this Frida is the Frida that got healthy and grew from it. Okay, scholars? So now let's look at our title again. The end of our title says, remain strong. So I think that Frida is telling herself to remain strong. So this Frida, who is happy and healthy and strong, is telling the broken Frida to remain strong because things are gonna get better. She's gonna become famous. She's gonna go all over the place, uh, all over the world. She's, she's gonna grow, she's gonna love her culture. So she wants her to remain strong because this Frida knows that things are gonna get better. This next picture of Frida is very, very unique. It's very different than a lot of the other ones. So this picture of Frida, it's also a self-portrait because it's got her in it. And this is called Raices. Can we try saying Raices on three? Ready, one, two, three. Raices, good job scholars. So Raices in Spanish means fruits. And roots, usually we think about roots and we think about them in the ground. We think about them with plants or with trees and other things like that. But if we look at Frida, it looks like she's growing roots. It looks like they're going in and out of her. And it looks like she's connecting with the earth. So this is a very different side of Frida. This is a Frida that is very relaxed and her emotions are very calm. And we can see that she's connecting, connecting to the earth and connecting to her country and her culture. And this is something that Frida would do a lot. So a lot of the time, whenever Frida painted herself, she would paint her feelings. She wouldn't just paint herself however she wanted. She would paint the way that she felt inside. So whenever we look at paintings from Frida, we can always think, oh, I wonder what Frida was thinking. I wonder what she was feeling. And your painting will show you exactly how she was feeling. All right, scholars, so we've probably seen these pictures before. These are two of her very most famous self-portraits. This is actually probably her most famous self-portrait. This one is called Self-Portrait with Thorn Necklace and Hummingbird. So if we take a really close look, we can see a few things in this self-portrait. Of course, we see Frida, like always, but we also see her pet monkey. She really did have a pet monkey. That was a real thing. And we can also see a black cat that's standing right behind her. And then we see those leaves again, just like in the last one. So when we look at this self-portrait, it's called self-portrait with thorn necklace and hummingbird. So when we look at her necklace, now we know that she had thorns. So it was again, like those plants that we saw growing out of her. And then we have that hummingbird necklace right on the edge of it. The other self-portrait that we have on the top is another portrait where there's two Fridas. And this one is actually called the two Fridas. This is very, very famous. And this one was famous for a different reason. So in one Frida, we can see uh, a white dress. We can see that she looks very, very serious. Well, she looks serious in both of them, but because of the way she's dressed, she looks a little bit more serious in the white one. And then we can see another Frida who's kind of in her more traditional clothes. She's in her bright color. She's in her Mexican traditional clothes. So in this picture, in this self-portrait, Frida was trying to show you the two cultures that she grew up in. So Let's think about that for a little bit. If we remember our, our Monday video, we remember that Frida's dad was German. He was from Germany. He was from a different country than Frida. And Frida's mom was from Oaxaca. Frida's mom was from Mexico. So her dad was from Germany. Her mom was from Mexico. And that means when they came together to make Frida, Frida it was like she was bringing both countries inside her heart. So here we can kind of see how she's bringing both of them. 
we can see that both the Fridas are holding hands and that she feels connected to Germany and she's connected to Mexico. We can also see that they're connected because you can see a vein that's connecting from one heart to another. So Frida was very, very, um, I don't want to say confused. She was kind of like, she felt like she was a part of both cultures because she had her dad on one side and her mom on the other. And so when they came together, she came, uh, came together with both cultures too. All right, scholars, so now let's talk about what you're gonna return for today's video. So for today, I want you guys to send me, um, I want you to tell me about your favorite Frida self-portrait and why that one stands out to you. Okay, I, I want you to pick your favorite, but I want you to tell me why it stands out. Why is it different? Why do your eyes want to see that one more? Okay, here's a sentence that can help you with that. It says, my favorite Frida self-portrait was blank. And there you can put the title of the self-portrait, you can describe it. And it says, it stands out to me because blank. So right here, you're gonna tell me why does that one catch your eye? Why does that one stand out? Okay? Let's also remember that you have two ways to turn things in, okay? You have our art Flipgrid and you have Google Classroom. If you turn it on Google Classroom, you can write in the classroom comments, you can write it in a journal and take a picture, you can write it on a whiteboard and take a picture, but if you wanna do a Flipgrid video, then you're going to follow these steps, okay? First, you need to go to flipgrid.com on your Chromebook. Then you can put in the code for your grade. So if you're in second grade, you're gonna put in this code. And if you're in third grade, you're gonna put in this code. After you put in the code, you just join with your school email. That's very important. Join with your school email. After that, scholars, you're gonna be inside our Flipgrid classroom, and that'll be it. So don't forget your sentence to help you out. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone's Flipgrids and Google Classroom returns. I'll talk to you guys soon.